Today, as part of our yoga foundations, we're looking at warrior two pose, Virabhadrasana two. In Sanskrit, Virabhadra is warrior, and asana, of course, means pose. So together, we have warrior pose. Um, so this is variation two, warrior two. Start with the feet a little wide, and notice how you feel. If you feel like you could use a little bit more space here, you can step the feet a little wider. And if you're feeling like you need more stability, you could bring the feet in a little closer. So warrior two is of course one of our standing poses and it is all about strength, the strength of the warrior. So we wanna feel strong and grounded here, rooting down through the feet, the legs are strong throughout the whole pose. So it's important to build a solid foundation and make sure that the distance of the feet makes sense for you. If you come into the pose and you find that it's not working, you can always make an adjustment. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna externally rotate the right thigh and take those right toes, point them towards the short edge of the mat. And notice that hip opening as the thigh externally rotates. So the right toes are gonna stay pointing towards the short edge of the mat throughout this posture. Now you may need a little bit more space you may scoochie the right butt out a little further, or you may feel like you're about to fall and need to pull the feet in a little closer. The front heel is gonna line up with the back arch, and we're gonna turn those back left toes towards the front top corner of the mat, kind of going for like a 60 degree angle, but it's nothing too technical, it's not an exact science. You wanna find the, the toe position that works for you. So for some people, if they're strained on the outer ankle, they may take those toes and point them a little bit more towards the long edge of the mat. If it's comfortable for you, you take that 60 degree angle towards that top left corner of the mat or maybe the top corner of the room. And then begin to put a bend in that front knee. And again, here you may need a little more space, so you may find yourself scooting the feet out a little bit wider. And we're gonna bring that front leg to almost a 90 degree angle. Now, if this is uncomfortable, maybe you work up a little higher today. So we want the knee to track right over that second toe. The back leg is strong and the feet are grounded. So we're sealing out through the outer edge of the back foot and we're sealing down through the front foot. And as we press into the feet, it's that root to rise sensation. Strong feet, strong legs, total engagement, and we want the pelvis bowl to be neutral here. So if you find that your pelvis is tilting towards the right, really engage through those left glutes, the left outer leg, press through that left pinky toe side of the foot and find a neutral place with the pelvis. The crown of the head should stack right over the pelvis, shoulders right over hips. And as much as we think about opening towards the front edge of the mat, we won't fully open towards the front edge of the mat. We've got toes going this way and toes coming in this way. And so we don't wanna force the hip and the knee in a direction that's not in line with the toe. But we do open up the arms wide and we're thinking about moving towards that long edge of the mat. Now there's a tendency here for one arm to be a little higher than the other. We wanna keep those arms right in line with each other. So you might look back, look forward, notice your arm placement and we wanna keep the chest open. So to get that sensation, you can kind of roll the shoulders up and find that openness in the chest, spread wide across the collarbone, and keeping what you have in the shoulders, flip the palms down. See if you might go a little deeper into that bend and lift up, 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 engage the core, grow tall through the crown of the head, and the drishti is out right over the middle fingers. See if you might stay here for five breaths. 